Are you a baseball player or throwing athlete that's currently dealing with elbow or shoulder pain? I want to talk to you today about a common concept that we look at when we're evaluating shoulder range of motion in either of these scenarios and why it's important that we look at both very closely. How do I know this? My name is Dr. Jeff Lewis. I'm the owner of physical therapist of Lewis Physical Therapy and Sports Rehab in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, where I have helped countless baseball players and throwing athletes get back to throwing pain-free, get stronger, and throw harder. Whenever I have a throwing athlete, usually a baseball player, especially a pitcher, come in that's dealing with either elbow or shoulder pain, I'm always looking at shoulder range of motion. And you might say, like, okay, well, hey, if we're dealing with an elbow injury, why do we have to look at the, sho at the shoulder from a range of motion standpoint? <clears throat> the reason being is because of how much stress goes into the shoulder during the throwing motion. And simply, as simply put, if there is some type of limitation from a shoulder range of motion standpoint, where is that motion going to have to go through or create more force from? More often than not, it's the elbow. So whenever we're discussing shoulder range of motion, there's two common concepts that come up. There's what we call GERD, which is glenohumeral internal rotation deficit, and TROM, total range of motion or total arc of motion throughout the shoulder. I want to start with talking about GERD, that glenohumeral internal rotation deficit. For the longest time in the baseball world, GERD was pretty much the reason that any injury that injury had happened. Oh, you hurt your elbow, you hurt your shoulder, it's because you have a tight or you're limited in internal, internal rotation, which there's still a lot of truth to that. But the main reason being was a lot of people were saying was, oh, you have a tight posterior capsule. <clears throat> As more and more research has come out and there's just been a lot more done and looking at base, baseball players, overhead athletes, but especially baseball players, we're starting to see that that internal rotation deficit, it's one small piece of the puzzle. And it's not always due to a tight posterior capsule. I've seen a lot of pitchers where they have a relatively lax capsule because of just how much motion they have. But there have also been times where there is some type of a tight posterior capsule. But when we look at internal rotation deficits, it can be due to a number of things. It could be due to, yes, a tight posterior capsule. It could be due to bony changes, such as you know, humeral retroversion, which is a process that happens from when guys start playing at a younger age in terms of just the twisting and torsion on that humerus where there's literal structural bony changes that leads to these changes or loss of internal rotation. We're going to come back to that a little bit. And then there's also a lot of soft tissue restrictions or mobility restrictions that can play a role into this. I particularly look a lot at that posterior rotator cuff flexibility, especially from a cross body horizontal adduction test. If a lot of guys cannot get their elbows are coming across their body with me blocking here to relatively close to their nose, there's probably a lot of restrictions that are being at play here, either from the posterior capsule or from that posterior cuff. Going back to what I was talking about, the bony, the bony changes. These are normal changes for a thrower shoulder. A thrower shoulder is completely different from any other shoulder, from any other shoulder that's out there. And it's normal for there to be these changes. This started to lead to uh, people looking into more of the total range of motion or total arc of motion. So what is that? That literally means the total arc of motion of external rotation getting to layback plus internal rotation coming forward. The reason this is a more comprehensive range of motion measurement compared to just GERD itself is because it takes into account the bony changes that happen from it. We know that throwers are going to be lacking internal rotation on their throwing side where it becomes a problem is if there is a 20 degrees, some people say 25, but generally if there's more than a 20 degree difference in internal rotation or less of internal rotation on the throwing side compared to their non-throwing their non -throwing side, 10 to 15 degree change, I mean, that's relatively normal to me because of the changes that they get. Now, because they're going to be lacking internal rotation on, on that side, on their throwing side, they're probably going to have a lot more external rotation. I've had some guys, when you stretch them in external rotation, their forearm gets darn near perpendicular to the floor. Not everyone's like that. That's very specific cases. But that is very much a viewpoint of what we want to look at there. From a total range of motion standpoint, generally what I am looking out for on evaluation is if there is a deficit greater than 5 degrees of the throwing side to the non-throwing side. So an example of that would be, say, the total range of motion on the non-throwing side. So let's say I'm a righty thrower. Total range of motion on my non-throwing side is... 175 degrees. And then I go and I get and I look at on my throwing side and my total range of motion is 172 degrees. You're within that five degree, that relative five degree limit. Now, if my total range of motion on this side is 150 degrees versus 175 on this side, that's a problem. And we got to see what is going on. Why is it? Why is it tight? Is it because of either bony changes, soft tissue restrictions? Is there some type of scapular involvement that a lot of times 
will play a role in terms of how much range of motion you have. If you don't have good scapular positioning or mechanics, you're going to run out of room on the front of your shoulder to internally rotate. And in a nutshell, if you don't have room to internally rotate in your shoulder, where are you going to try to get that force from? It's going to come from the elbow. You're going to require more force through that flexor pronator mass as you're coming through, which leads to more stress on the elbow, which leads to more fatigue over time and eventually some type of injury. Now, the opposite side, if you are limited in getting into external rotation here, that's where pitchers make their money is in their external rotation. And if you're tight there, but you still try to get that range of motion, where's it going to come from? Probably the elbow. You're going to get a lot more valgus stress on the elbow, which the UCL is that first thing I think about whenever we think of valgus stress on the elbow. So that's a lot of the differences there in terms of why we can't just go based off one value versus the other. You can have someone that has a good total, a normal total range of motion, but maybe there is a difference and maybe some type of limitation in internal rotation on that throwing side. It really just is a matter of we can't just see one value and say that's the reason, that's the only thing we're going to look at. It needs to be an open approach and assessing, again, whether it is due to bony changes, due to capsular restrictions, due to soft tissue restrictions, due to scapular restrictions. There's four things right there that we just went over that could be playing a role into it versus just saying it's one thing altogether, and that just requires a good thorough evaluation. So again, there's a lot that we cover there on shoulder range of motion. If at the very least, this just gives you some tools to ask questions to the clinician you're seeing or anything like that, that's a great place, that's a great place to start and just kind of pick their brain about it more than anything. So if you have any specific questions though, go ahead and leave a question in the comment section below or text us at the number below when we get back to you with how we can help you with a more personal individualized plan.